Hello and welcome. Welcome to Quilt Conversations Live. I'm Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter. And we're going to talk about some easy rulers, cutting rulers for fabric. They're acrylic rulers to help us cut our fabric accurately and quickly. And several of them in the carousel below here on Amazon are from my favorite uh ruler company creative grids yes i love their rulers and let's take a look at the first one it's highlighted in the carousel it's called the stripology ruler it is a good size ruler because we want to cut strips look at the size of this this is pretty big right it is 20 inches across for cutting 20 inches across for cutting that's pretty big, right? Let's look at the details of why we would want a cutting ruler that large to cut strips. Many of our quilt patterns require that we cut strips of fabric. When we are making quilts like the one you see behind me right here, we use a method called strip piecing. We want to cut strips to help us quickly sew the patchwork design together. And this ruler is gonna help us do that. Let's take a look at a video. Creative Grid Stripology Slotted Cutting Ruler. Goes from zero to 20 inches. Use their coded system of squares and stars to cut two and a half and one and a half inch strips cut multiple layers with the slotted ruler. Using the squares you can quickly cut two and a half inch strips. No measuring, two and a half inch for the square and one and a half inch for the star. You can also use it to subcut strips into smaller units, like squares. You can cut multiple strips at a time. Two and a half strips are now being subcut into two and a half inch squares. You can also cut diamonds using the 45 degree angle. Align your strip with the 45 degree angle and cut the width of the strip. This is a two inch strip, so you cut every two inches with the strip on the 45 degree line to get diamonds. Creative Grid Stripology Slotted Cutting Ruler goes from Isn't that great? I love this ruler. There's so many shapes that you can cut. Not only strips, long rectangles, right? You can cut squares, diamonds, triangles using the lines on the ruler. Hello, Jacqueline. How are you? Nice to see you here. I'm doing pretty good. I am excited to share my favorite rulers, and they are the Creative Grid rulers. And I love how they have, I'm going to go to the overhead camera, how they have this nice system. You see that? That is the grip system right there on each of these slots. It helps to grip the fabric. I love having that on the ruler because it doesn't shift when you're cutting. So I love that. And then it has all these lines that we need to cut those different shapes. We have our 45 degree line and our 60 degree line. They help us to cut those common strips that we use 
the one and a half inch and the two and a half inch with this square and diamond system. I love that feature about the Creative Grid rulers. So <clears throat> we have another stripology ruler to look at. Let's look at the stripology squared. This is a smaller version with some additional lines. The additional lines, hopefully you can see that those white lines, those are to help us square our blocks. Let's take a look at this. Ways to square off blocks. So right away, can you see those black squares? These are whole increments. If you need to square something off that's three inches square, four inches square, etc., etc. That's what the black squares are. When you want to square off something that's a half inch increment, you're going to use the white squares in the center. See that white square in the center? Right square. And then you can use the horizontal and vertical line also to square it off, to help you in squaring it off. And you can use the diagonal. See those dashed diagonal lines? That also is going to help you square off your block. Here's your four and a half for squaring off. Then here's your six and a half. It's white all the way up to 12 and a half inches to square off a 12 and a half inch square block. Dash lines down the center. I can put that white dash line right down this block and on either side to line it up vertical and horizontal as well. So all of your seams are going to be lined up so that you can square this off perfectly. Now, what can be confusing about this is that you're like, okay, well, how do I trim it? I can't go this way. That's because you have to do left and right or right and left first, then turn the block and do the other two sides. So you do two sides at a time. So, and you'll see the numbers. There's eight and a half here and there's eight and a half here. So this was already trimmed, eight and a half right here. If I was doing, say, six and a half, I would see six and a half on this side and six and a half on this side. Here you can see the six and a half on this side. And then when you scoot over to the other side, you're going to see six and a half. So you're going to cut on that side and then you're going to cut on this side. Then you rotate the block and you repeat the same thing. I love it. It's one of my favorite rulers. And... I want to show you with one of these blocks. Here's another quilt block. This is a star block. After you finish piecing the segments for, for this block, you want to make sure it's square before you add it to the next quilt block. All your quilt blocks need to be squared and the same size, each one the same size, before you put them together. Let's go to the overhead camera. So I would use probably my rotating mat. I think we need to go wide on this. Let's go wider. That's a little bit better. And when I'm using my rotating mat in a larger space than what you can see here on camera, but I would take the, the ruler and I would line it up. I would use the lines on the ruler to check all my seams to make sure that they are nice and straight nice and straight here with the ruler before I trim off the edges to make it 12 and a half inches square. That's why I love rulers that not only have a nice grip system so the block doesn't move when I am cutting, but also it allows me to double check to make sure that I'm going to keep my my star points, we, want, we don't want to trim off, trim off those star points, right? We want to keep these star points. So before we cut, we're always looking to make sure we have our quarter inch seam allowance and then we square off our quilt block. I love this ruler. It's one of my favorites. So 
those two rulers, stripology and the stripology squared, are both rulers that help us accurately cut and quickly cut and trim our quilt block patchwork and our quilt blocks once they are completely assembled. Now, we also have some rulers that are specialty rulers. They help us do a specific task, like a triangle. And so one is this 60 degree triangle ruler. And it's another one of my favorites. Let's go to the overhead camera and I'll share that with you. This is the 60 degree triangle ruler. Why is this one of my favorites? I think I want to move this over. Let me move this over here. Okay. That way we have that all set up there. Okay, there we go. That's the 60 degree triangle ruler. I think, again, I need to go wide because you can't really see. That's much better. Yeah, that's much better. Move things out of the way here. All right. So this is the 60 degree triangle ruler. And it goes from one inch all the way down to eight and a half inches. So you can make, of course, triangles, and then you can combine them to make other shapes. And the top of it is nipped off at the top, the point here, which is a bonus for cutting accurate triangles. We're going to cut the triangles using strips. And you would just take a strip. For instance, here's a piece of fabric. It's a strip of fabric. And I want to make this into triangles. What size is the strip? Let's let's measure that. It's three and a half inches. So that means I'm going to look on the ruler for three and a half inches. And I'm going to put the blunt end of the triangle at the top of the strip. When I put it at the top, that means down here should be three and a half, and it is. It says three and a half inches. Then I need my rotary cutter, which, where is my rotary cutter? When you need it. All right, it's on the other table. All right, so you would cut here and cut here to get your triangle. After you cut that first one, then you're just going to rotate the ruler and then you're going to only have to cut on one side and then you rotate it again until you get a series of triangles. It's just that easy. So once you do that, you want to sew those triangles together. And one way that you can do that Let's take a look at these triangles. So you can make triangles that are one and a half, two and a half, all the way up to eight and a half inches. So here are some triangles. Now that looks so uh, dark. Let me lighten that up a little bit. Okay. So some red triangles and here's some blue. So we would take a triangle like this, turn this one around, then turn this that way, and then this one the opposite way, and then we would sew these together in a quarter inch seam, and we'd have a strip of triangles. Then you would sew those strips together. And what that could look like is this right here. See that? And that's what this 60 degree ruler helps us to do. It helps us to make cuts for triangles so that we can make patchwork pieces like this very quickly and easily. And you can stack your fabrics one on top of another and cut quickly multiple triangles at one time. I love having a specialty ruler for a special shape. And this is one by Creative Grids. And don't forget with Creative Grids, we have this grip system, that dot, this dot, this is all to grip the fabric while you are cutting so the fabric doesn't shift. And that grip is right down the center, as well as along the perimeter, all the way around. And the perimeter is actually a quarter inch. So I like that too. That's just an extra bonus. So what can you make with uh, triangles? What kind of pattern can you make with triangles? 
Let me pick that up. Let me show you an example of what I made using this ruler. Bring this on the camera view. This is a table runner where I put in some triangles using different solid fabrics. And so right here is where I cut the triangle, right there. And then I sewed it a row at a time, just like I showed you. And then I sewed the two rows together. Isn't that a nice looking assortment of pinks and purples? If you're a pink and purple gal, <laughs> you might choose another color. But this is what you can do with this um, 60 degree uh, triangle ruler. It makes it fast and easy. Now, of course, you can make a big quilt. You can make it all triangles and they can be any size you want. You might want to make a big bed quilt, but I don't know if I want to use a very small triangle for that. You might want to use this the entire size, eight and a half inch. You might want to cut a strip that size and then sew them together to create eight inch strips, eight and a half inch strips that then turn into eight inch triangles. Beautiful. It's equal on each side, right? Equal lateral. So that's right there. Equal lateral triangle, 60 degree triangle. So that is something that you can make. All right, so we just looked at our first specialty ruler, triangles. If you're just joining me, we looked at some rulers that help us cut multiple shapes. Now we're looking at rulers that cut very specific shapes and specific designs. So let's look at the next one. I'm gonna put this aside. The next ruler, I'll highlight it in the carousel, is a really fun ruler. Okay, I might have this here. I'll put that to the side. Let me hold up an example for you. This is an example of what you can make with this specialty ruler. Isn't that nice? I love this. This is such a fun design. Let's take a look at it over, uh, with our overhead camera. All right, so this is the ruler. It's the hexagon trim tool. Hexagon trim tool. Again, I think I'm gonna do that. Hexagon trim tool. Here we go. Hexagon Trim 2 by Creative Grids. You can see the design right here, right? A little bug there. And Creative Grids, and remember, it has that awesome grip system here in the back. It's going right along here, along the hexagon shape. There's that Creative Grids grip system, that shaded area. All this shade, this is going to help grip the fabric as you cut. All right, and so we can make this, and you see there's the shape right there. You can see, okay, I'm gonna show you this. See those dashed lines? Let me move this here, okay. See the dashed lines right here and here? That is the size of the finished hexagon, and then the shaded area is your seam allowance. And so when I put this down, you can see how this is fitting so that the seam allowance is outside of this finished area with the purple. So my seam allowance is beyond the purple, right? Let's look at this in stages real quick. I'll give you a quick little tutorial of how you make this. It is so easy. All right, let's take a look. So we need to cut that center shape, right? We need, we need this shape in the center. 
this is the shape right here. We need that one in the center. That's the first thing we need. We need this. So we need a strip. We need a strip of fabric. So here is a strip of fabric right here. When I put my ruler over this, the hexagon trim ruler, do you see that shape right there? There it is, right? Okay. So how do we cut it? Based on the strip, you see how this is? I'm going to turn this around so you can actually see the difference. See how it's the bottom and the top edges here? So when I'm placing the ruler on top of the strip, all I have to do is cut right here and cut right here to start creating that first hexagon shape for the center. Once that's done, then I just rotate the ruler, putting it on what I just cut. Remember, I cut right here. Pretend this is no longer here. Then I'm going to cut here and here. That's it. Then I get my hexagon shape. That's the center. Once I have that center, the next thing I need are these pieces right here. So in the instructions that you get with this, it will tell you where to stitch these pieces, right? And put the one here and you skip this one and then you go to this one. You skip this one and you go to this one. And you're going to sew these on with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you do that, you end up with this. There we go, right? You're going to take this and then you're going to have to trim it, right? Let me go up to the next size. No, I don't think you trim at this point. No, you don't trim at this point. What you have to do is put the next two strips, the next strip here, here, and here. After you sew those three, then you trim. Then you trim. And you get this. So we put on the purple over the red. Then we come in with our hexagon tool, and then we trim. So that is our first round and our second round. We're always doing three pieces of fabric all the way around. Once that was done, I decided to put black all the way around. So it went from this, I'll put this one first, this here to this, then we went to this. Okay, all made with this hexagon trim tool. Beautiful, right? Not hard to do. If you are a scrap lover, you have scrap fabric, this is perfect for using those bits of scrap fabric you have. Another option would be to make something like this. Look at this here. This is your center hexagon. Then you have round one with the gray, round two with the pink. And then instead of doing black all the way around like I have here, I alternated the color. But you can use solid colors. You can, use, you can alternate the colors. It is up to you. Have fun with this ruler. This is the hexagon trim tool by Creative Grids. It includes instructions on how to make the block I just showed you here and other things as well. Because if you look at this right here, you will get ha a half hexi. You can make a half hexagon design. And you can use this ruler to trim with strips half hexagons. So lots to do with this specialty ruler. So what do you think about that? Isn't that a fun ruler? I love 
having very specific tools to create very specific designs. It doesn't have to be hard if we find the right tool. And I love to share the right tool. Right, Jacqueline, if you're still here? I love to share the right tool to get what we want done. Okay. So what is next? The next thing in the carousel is for scraps. And it's called uh, Scrap Crazy. And it's by Creative Grids. Scrap Crazy. Let's take a look at it with the overhead camera. I think we can go uh, tight on this one because I want you to be able to see everything you get here. Of course, you get an instruction booklet, right? Instruction booklet, a little pattern in the back. They show you on the inside how you can cut the fabric and you get these pieces and they're um, number, uh, letter coded. So this is a, this is B, this is C, and this is D. So if you're a quilter, you're probably already thinking that makes a square. When we sew these four pieces together, we make a square. Then of course, we're gonna sew those squares together to make, oh good, you're still here, wonderful we are going to make beautiful designs. Now, how do you use these? This is still a Creative Grids ruler, right? With that non, with that um, special grip all the way around the perimeter. We have black and white lines to help us see. But you may have noticed that there's another letter here, even though it's A, B, C, D, which is four, four pieces, we can get a fifth piece with the letter E. And I'm gonna show you what we can do with that. So let's actually do some cutting. What I'm going to do is get up from my seat and go get my rotary cutter. I thought it was here on the table, but it is not. So I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, that didn't take too long, right? All right, so let's look at cutting some of these pieces. And what I want to show you is that what we can do with piece B is that we can flip it, cut the mirror image of piece B, and when we do that, we end up with a triangle down here at the bottom, and that is letter E. That is this smaller triangle right here. So we are going to do that. Let's start with cutting letter A. We're going to cut letter A. And basically, you're just going to bring out your box, your bag, your container of strips. And you're going to see, can I fit the template on top of that scrap piece of fabric? You find out if you can, and then if you can, then you just go and you cut that shape, right? And you always wanna cut the corners. These corners are gonna help you with your strip, your um, piecing. All right, I'm using a rotating mat, so I'm gonna turn this so I can get to this side very easily. Oops, out of camera view. Let me bring this up a little bit higher. All right, I'm gonna shift that so I can get it in camera view. All right. Now, hopefully it's matching up on the other side. It's hard for me to see because I'm sitting down. Let me move this over. Check this again. All right. Getting out of camera view. Sorry about that, ladies. All right, here I am back. Cut that there, cut there. 
And basically you would, and this is the benefit of getting a rotating mat. So you don't move the template and the fabric. Instead, you are moving the, um, the mat. So I'm going to cut this right here and right there. And try not to shift again. I would normally do this standing. All right, so we have letter A. That's A. I'm going to put that aside. We need letter B. This is letter B. Here's a piece of fabric. It's a scrap piece of fabric, and I'm going to cut both sides of this. I'm going to cut it with the letter B up, and then I'm going to turn it upside down so I can get the mirror image of B. Turn that. And cut there. Okay, turn that so I can get in here. Okay. And I get here and there. And then I have one more cut right here okay so that is one side of b and so now i'm going to turn this around and cut b again which is the same thing as if i would turn this this way right and then turn this the other side but I don't want to do that because I need the grip system I need to have this gripping the fabric so instead I'm going to turn the fabric over okay and keep this the same let me see turn it um, make sure it just fits in there turn it around yep there we go all right, so it's good here. It's good there and there. Now I only need to cut two sides right here and right here. All right, so I'm gonna hold that down, cut that side, rotate. And cut this side and up here there's actually two little notches here so one there all right so now I have two of these right they're now mirror image they're not exactly the same they're mirror image see that this is B with the letter with the letter B facing up and this is B upside down. But instead of turning the ruler upside down, I turn the fabric onto the wrong side. So I can still use the grip system. That's a little tip there for you. All right, so we have A cut and we have B cut. Here's the letter C. Let's cut for a uh, letter C here. Oh, I'm sorry, this is D. We'll cut D since I have it here, but we need to cut both D and C. So here is D. I guess I'll move it down. That way I only have two cuts. One, well actually three, because I need to cut that little tip right there. All right, there we go. That's D. Now we're going to cut C. And if you're noticing that I'm cutting it all with the fabric up, the fabric is up. I'm going to line that up on here. Let me turn that around. Okay. 
Okay, and then we're almost there. Okay. I'm going to cut fabric E with this one here. Here's the cutting line. It tells you on the ruler that this is the cutting line for fabric E. And this is E. All right, we have everything cut. All our letters. Those are all our pieces. You can see how handy it is to have a rotating mat, right? All right, let me get myself together here. All right, so. This is A. This is fabric A. Here is A. Now we need, whoops, here we go. Turn this around. We need B. So where is our B? Here's our B. All right. We need <clears throat> C. Here's fabric C. And we need D. Here's fabric D. Now, remember, with this, all the seam allowances are included when you cut. So the grayed out area is our seam allowance. So you're going to sew A to B, C to D, then you're going to sew those two units together, right? Now you want to be strategic about what colors you use for each section, right? You can make it super scrappy or you can strategically place the colors so that you create additional designs. And guess what? Right here on Amazon, there's a carousel with a book, two books, with designs on how to use each size to make very different quilts based on the fabric choices and then the combinations that you use to sew together. So each of these can be used in multiple ways. That's the other benefit of this. So remember I told you that we have our fabric, our cut for the letter E. Here's the letter E, right? Here's the letter E. Turn it upside down, turn it this way. That's the letter E. We cut that. We're going to move D out of the way and put in E. We're going to take away, no, oh, that was C. This is D, and then this is C. So we're going to take out C. We're going to take out D. And we're going to bring in the mirror of letter B. So now we have a completely different design. Just by changing what we place on this side. So we're going to sew this to this, sew this to this. Then we're going to sew those units together. Fun, right? I love this. A great way to save and use your fabric for very specific uh, scrappy designs. And you can use scraps in combination with yardage. You don't have to use scraps only. You can combine them. So this is the Creative Grids scrap crazy this is the scrap crazy and you can see here this is the six inch size they have another size i think it's eight inches you can see how it's sewn together and remember on the inside it's going to give you instructions 
on how to cut and maximize your cuts. Okay, so I love this scrappy, scrap crazy, six inch, very specific tool. We're looking at patchwork cutting tools, cutting rulers to help us cut strips, cut shapes, and now we just finished looking at one of the Creative Grid rulers that helps us use our scraps with very specific shapes. And I did promise you that if you needed help on how to use the Scrap Crazy for design inspiration, there are a couple of books. First, you can get this pattern. I just highlighted it in the carousel here on Amazon, and this is the pattern. Let me go to the overhead camera. Right here, that is the pattern. It is a cut loose pattern. It's called Sparklers. And you get everything you need in the pattern, instructions on the back, the layout. And if you notice right here, remember I told you that by just highlighting one particular color, that is the letter B that's in yellow. It's this one right here, the letter B, this shape. This shape, the letter B, is yellow in this pattern. And so everything else is a blue color. And now you create what they call sparklers, okay? So that is one thing. The next is called Scrap Crazy Six Inch. This is a book that includes seven projects featuring the scrap crazy, which is the templates I just did a little demo on, right? It's this features these templates. Look at these designs. Remember I said that you can use the templates to cut very specific colors and color value and fabric so that you can create different designs. And then you can use just one template like this one. This is the Let's see, I think it is the letter C. This is the letter C, which is a quarter of a half hexagon. Well, it's half of a half hexagon, a quarter of a hexagon. See, this is one half of a hexagon. And so you just sew this and you can sew it together to make this flower pattern. So all the instructions are included, of course, with diagrams so you can quickly go through the book with making different patterns. Look at that one. Isn't that great? You can make that. And then this on the back. Stars. So many options with this scrap crazy six inch uh, pattern booklet. All right. What else can we use with the scrap crazy? There's another book. I promised you there was a lot you could do with this. Here is the second one, Crazy for More. If you love this set, you are going to get a lot out of it. You have enough projects to last you at least a couple of years, if not longer. Crazy for More. Again, it's color placement and how you use each of the four templates that helps you create these different designs. And Karen Montgomery, who is the designer, she's a fabulous designer. She designed the templates. She does, this is her book. She designed these quilts and she's sharing them with us. So you can make the patterns, learn how to use the color value to make something like this. Isn't that gorgeous? That is so pretty. I love that. Here's another one. And this is crazy for more using the scrap crazy six inch. All right. So I love this. Isn't this great? I love being able to use all the fabric we get with not only cutting accuracy with good rulers, like the ones in the beginning of the carousel. If you weren't here earlier, I talked about the stripology rulers. There are two of them. And 
I like both of them for cutting strips and for cutting shapes, especially when you have a large number to, to cut for a large project. Then we talked about very specific templates that cut very specific shapes, triangles, hexagons, and lastly, the Scrap Crazy, which has four different shapes, right? Triangle, a quarter of a hexagon, and I don't know what these other shapes are, but actually there's two of them that are a quarter of a hexagon. The C and D are the same, but one is just smaller, right? Let me show that to you one more time. See how that's just a little bit smaller? They're the same shape, but one is smaller. So many options with these templates. I love Creative Grid Rulers. They make it easy to use and cut your fabric because they have the uh, exclusive uh, grip system on the back of the ruler. Plus, they have white and black lines on it so you can read it on light and dark fabric. You can read easily to cut. So I like that. We are going to move on to some additional things. But before I do, I want to share with you that if you are new to quilting and you need help with that. Hey, Tyrus, thank you for following. Oh, Jacqueline, you have some creative grid rulers. Fantastic. Do you like them? Do you like them? I have slowly been changing all of my rulers to creative grid rulers, especially the ones that I use every for every quilt. There are some rulers that we use over and over again. And I just like the way they work. They help me get accurate cuts. Which one is your favorite, Jacqueline, that you have created good rulers? Uh, but if you need additional help with uh, quilting, you want to know some of the techniques that I use to make the quilt like you see behind me, um, how I prep my fabric, um, how to piece you haven't used any yet. When are you going to get started? <laughs> I know sometimes we don't have time always to do it, but I hope you get started soon because it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Um, so anyway, I like to share with you that um, 10 steps to stress-free machine quilting. I don't want quilting to be stressful for you. That's why I like to come here and share different tools that I love to help me achieve my goals in quilting. Because I not only want to achieve them, I want it to be easier. I don't want it to be stressful. I want to be able to cut the fabric, sew it, quilt it, all with the right tools. So that's what I'm doing here today, sharing with you some of those tools that I use to make beautiful quilts, quilts that go into magazines. Yes, quilts that will last. You can wash it over and over and over again, and it will last. And you want to know what those techniques and tools are, and you can find out here. So I want to let you know that, and I am going to um, do a brief little early end of the stream on another platform and so you're going to see a little outro for my friends on amazon i'm not going away it's just a transition for uh, my friends over there on you on youtube so this is just an uh, opportunity to say thank you for joining me for a session on on creative grid rulers I love those rulers. They are fantastic for quilters to get the cuts we need for the designs we want to make.